All right, math techniques, let's do it. You ready, Rachel? I am so ready. So I always tell the students that we've got three big goofy techniques. The first one might be the most difficult to kind of master at first, but we'll get those fundamentals in a good spot and they'll get it going. And it's called plugin. All right, so the key with plugin, I would say, is uh, taking the abstract and making it concrete. It's really about eliminating algebra for the most part. Um, and it's essentially when you pick a number and put it in for the variable, as we'll see in a second. One of the things I like to tell my students is uh, it's great that they know algebra. They're going to need algebra on this test at some point, like, and probably in the rest of high school and part of college, probably. Uh, it's, it's great that they know algebra, but inher uh, inherently, uh, algebra is less safe than just working out with numbers. And that's why we're putting numbers in for the variables. That's why we're plugging in on this test, uh, to reduce our risk, to make the questions uh, go, f go faster and easier. So we'll show you what we're talking about with an example. And that's the way I would introduce it to the uh, students instead of talking abstractly about all this stuff. Again, no abstract, concrete. Let's do an example. All right. We've got Bob has $4 more than Lisa does. If Lisa has X dollars, how much would Bob have if he had doubled his money? So first step, I would say stick with all the systematic kind of fundamental general strategies, circle or underline what the question's asking for. So we're looking at what Bob would have if he doubled it. Um, and at this point, I'd recommend if you want to just try their algebraic way, kind of set a little trap for them in a way, because a lot of students might not um, buy into plug-in right away. They want to stick to their algebra. So maybe let them make their algebraic mistakes, which will often happen. So in this case, if you want to take us through, Rachel, how do we plug in here? If we're going to use numbers, which you should talk to your students, they should be using numbers here. It's just safer than the algebra. Uh, they're going to throw something in for that X value. I like to talk to my students about, well, how many candy bars can I buy for X dollars? You don't know. It's a placeholder for a number. So let's throw in a number here. We've got X equals 2. So, oh, great, great. If Lisa has $2, how much would Bob have if he doubled his money? Well, if Lisa has $2, let's do the math out for the beginning of that problem. Bob has $4 more than Lisa does. What, is that? what does Bob have? Most of your students can add 2 and 4. Hey, Bob's got 6. How much would he have if he doubled his money? He would have 12. Get them to write all of this down. X equals 2, Bob equals 6, solution or answer equals 12. Put it in a little box, put it somewhere that they can see it, they're not going to lose it. Great. The answer is 12. Oh no, none of these say 12, Kyle. They none all have them. X's in them. What's X? Panic. Don't panic. Nope. But luckily we have an X. Again, have them have that system so when they plug in X equals 2, circle it, whatever, so it's right there. They can visually see it. And right now they can now substitute it into all the answer choices. And once they put them all through, um, we'll see, nope, 6 is not 12, 10 is not 12, blah, blah, blah. E, E is 12, and there we go. Fabulous. And the uh, key here with plugin is it helps you avoid all of the algebraic traps that are set for your students in the other answer choices. We've got uh, answer choices that are correct if you forget to use parentheses. We've got answer choices that are correct if you put in a number for Bob. They're all there. Uh, the wrong answer choices on the ACT are not random. I like to tell my students they're there for different types of mistakes, different mistakes that other students have already made on this question. Uh, so avoid them by just doing plain old arithmetic. It's just easier. And that's an intro to plugin, and we will continue to delve in deeper with uh, subsequent examples.